the great thing about Unreal is that the people are always very close to the DJ booth. It's all about aesthetic and fast movements, a lot of energies, and everybody can dance where he or she likes. It totally changes the perspective of party experience. So in 2021, uh, Felix called me. Uh, he's one of the three guys from Unreal. And um, he said, Michael, uh, we are planning a new event. Uh, first listen, please, because it will be in a location. I said, in which location? He said, Boots House. He said, but Michael, listen, uh, we're going to change the whole location. We rebuilt the DJ booth. We will change the whole light system. Uh, it will be very special. And I said, okay, let's do it. Um, and some months later, uh, the event happened. I, I, I came in here. Everything was completely changed. I never saw Boats, Boats House like this. And um, it was simply unreal. Uh, yeah, Björn from Unreal has called me and said, like, Michael, let's do something special because Björn always wants to do something, something special and me as well. And he was like, maybe we should do a long set. And, and at that time, playing a long set was, I couldn't think about it. I, I, I said, maybe four hours I can do. I never played longer. I don't know how if I can handle that. He said, yeah, yeah it's okay. It's, it, believe me, it will be good. And then first we said, okay, let's do only maybe like a five-hour set and there will be a, um, a local support act. And I don't know, the closer it, it, it came, I, I don't know wh why. I just said, okay, let's do it. Let's, I, I want to take the challenge. Yeah, then I said, okay, let's, let's do eight hours. And this was, uh, yeah, it was, it, it was just a spontaneous decision. And... Um, yeah, I'm so happy because like everything changed with that decision. I couldn't sleep. I was super afraid because I, I never did it before. And I, I thought like, okay, will the people be happy to hear, the, to hear me the whole night or will it be boring for them? Uh, can, I, can I do it physically? Can I do it mentally? Um, to stay focused and concentrated and I had so much doubt and I was just scared because I never did it before and I think it's it's also great it was really a challenge for me um, but I, I went through all the music I bought over the last years and um, that's also what I, what I actually love so much about uh, All Night Long. I already felt like a magical connection during the event, like with Björn from Unreal and I, I, I saw how much passion they put into this because changing the whole location for one night is it's, it's uh, so much work, so much effort and it's, it's also super expensive and uh, that they focus so much on the experience um, for the people, I, I directly felt in love with it. As we felt like we started something which, uh, which really had a, a special meaning to us and uh, where we can put all of our passion inside, um, it was just an obvious next step to bring it also to other countries. I mean, I already had so, so much respect for the first one, which was here with, uh, I don't know, like 1,400 people. And then uh, we decided to go to a big warehouse in Antwerp. <laughs> Um, which was uh, had a 4,000 people capacity. And I, I, I get, again, I came to the point, like when the first one, I said, guys, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can keep 4,000 people going over a night. Um, but okay, let's, let's take another challenge. Uh, let's take the risk and let's just do it. And it was another very special uh, night and 
yeah, I'm just so happy that it that it happened. As a DJ, you always play two hours or maximum three hours, but it's not it's not typical that you play um, six, seven, eight hours in in some rare clubs. But it's not no, uh, it's not normal. So yeah, it was just uh, the next step. I mean, it's complicated on so many levels because you you first you need to find good locations in uh, in every country. We have a very high expectation to locations and also to the production side because light and sound is so important to us. So we we are, we are looking for a nice venue which has a nice look already, if, if it's just empty. And then, uh, yeah, you need to see if it's possible to build the production with the LED table and the lights, how we how we like it, if you can build a sound system on that scale as we like it. Uh, if it's possible to build uh, the, the 360 degree DJ booth that the people can always stand around you and it's uh, everybody's partying together. Um, so organizing that logistically and finding the right places for that is uh, it's definitely a big challenge. But since we work together, <laughs> everything is a... Uh, uh, a big challenge and uh, we just grow with that firstly it's focused on two colors which is red and white and um, but it doesn't need much more than that it's uh, it's it's all about aesthetic and fast movements a lot of energy strobes and of course uh, the um, the main thing is the led table and that gives i personally think uh, a very a very great image if you if you look to the towards the dj because you see like the table is glowing even if you can't see the visuals on it you you see like the glow around the table and um i yeah you never seen something like that before yeah like this is really my favorite thing about the whole uh, all night long that you can play different styles and genres and energy levels so i i always start much slower than when i play like a peak time set and i mean i mainly play old school tracks and uh like 95 of my 95 percent of my music collection is like old school music and um, so i basically started c collecting music from around 2001 2002 and uh i also play a lot of music from around 2010 so I go through all the decades of the uh, of the, of the techno evolution basically and play music all over the, from all over the years and for, for me that's a lot of fun to go like through the history of of uh, of techno around 2019 um, a friend of mine showed me some old records some old vinyls from from that era and um yeah, this totally hooked me up. I, I went to Discogs and shopped uh, so many vinyls and went through all the discographies from around that time and from from all kind of artists from that time. And um, since then, I am I realized that old school techno is that kind of sound which I like to play. So even if I play now some more stuff from around 2010, it still sounds old school because it was still produced differently to, the, to nowadays. I personally prefer over totally clean and perfectly sounding tracks from nowadays. Uh, of course, technically it's much better nowadays, but the sound aesthetic, the, the rawness, the roughness, um, and how it's produced, I, I, I just love it because it's so real it just feels very real to me and honest um there's they didn't care so much about drops or about was i don't know it was just about creating a a smart intelligent groove and um that's what i love so much about uh, the early 2000s I'm working on on a new track, yeah. Uh, I don't know how uh, or when I can finish it because with the whole world tour right now and the planning, 
uh, and the touring schedule it is pretty tough but i'm working on it it's really important for me of course to uh finally release new music 